tonight we're going to discuss a topic of, I think, some importance, and it's the issues related to airport screening and airport searches in the United, in the United States. Uh, this has become a fairly controversial issue uh, in the last uh, few weeks. Essentially, the positions concern uh, two very important issues, the safety of scanning devices on one hand and issues related to concerns of privacy on the other. Now, there are two uh, positions, both supported by scientific evidence, about scanners. Now, the proposition in scanners says that there's no danger from scanners, that the amount of radiation that you receive from the scanner is equal to about two minutes at 30,000 feet, and, that's, uh, and that you would receive more radiation on a long flight uh, than you would from being subjected to a scanner. However, there are others, uh, such as scientists at Columbia University, who are very concerned about exposure to scanners. Uh, they say that uh, scanners are essentially uh, unlawful, and that they're dangerous and a threat to public health. They have particular concerns with uh, pregnant women, uh, children, and people with genetic abnormalities uh, who are not able to repair their DNA that might be uh, damaged by the scanners. Uh, they assert that uh, far from being a uh, small amount of radiation uh, consistent with that two-minute span, they allege that the amount of uh, radiation that subject, people are subjected to may be 20 times higher than what's uh, been alleged. They are also concerned uh, that effects to low-level radiation are cumulative, a little here, a little there, and it ends up with genetic defects, birth defects, are possibly cancers, particularly skin cancers. Um, the pilots' union is opposed to uh, the scanners, again, because they're beginning to recognize that they're already ex exposed to substantial amounts of radiation, and they're also concerned uh, that they find this somewhat uh, in, in, uh, silly. What will happen if you don't properly screen a pilot? The pilot will what? Get in the cockpit and control the airplane? I think that's probably what many people would tell you he's there to do. Uh, the, uh, so that there's a problematic uh, situation uh, concerning the effects of the radiation and the health consequences. And what makes it even more daunting is the fact that uh, these kinds of low yield of radiation may not produce a cancer for 10 years, 20 years, uh, 30 years into the future, uh, and that it becomes difficult to properly assess it. There's a movement on uh, suggesting that the airline pilots and flight crews really need, need to be uh, subjected to the same kind of regime that hospital workers around radiation are subjected to, so that they can be fully protected both from the uh, in-flight radiation that they receive from the atmosphere and monitored to the, uh, for the uh, radiation from scanners or other devices. Other people are concerned about the scanners because of a very simple reason. While they are essentially somewhat of a medical device, they don't have the kind of safety protocols, and they don't have the kind of experienced workers, and they don't have the kind of protections for the workers that are around them that would exist in a dentist's office or a doctor's office or a ho our hospital, uh, and they are substantially unregulated in their use. But even more sensitive, perhaps, are the concerns with uh, uh, privacy. Um, that security protocol exists in two levels. First, there's the scanner, which might subject you to harmful radiation. And the other thing is the hands-on searches, uh, the thorough groping that may occur in those searches. Uh, there's a question as to how those things, uh, those searches, uh, comport with uh, your right uh, to be free from governmental intrusion. But I think it's a more fundamental than framing it just in the constitutional terms. It's a fact that uh, the American people, or many of them, have fundamental ideas about decency and propriety, and they want to be left alone, which is the core of our concern with not being searched. But far more kind of fundamental than that is this idea that the Constitution established these uh, limits to what government can do and establishes a spirit in which the individual is free to, to operate and free to be himself or herself. Now, the problem with this is people are suggesting that when you choose to travel, 
uh, you uh, subject yourself to a different kind of regime. The problem with that is that, of course, even now, uh, Homeland Security is suggesting that it doesn't want to limit searches uh, to airports, or, or maybe it'll expand to bus terminals or public buildings. Uh, what's the limit to that? What we're seeing is a new relationship between the American people and its government. Previously, the government was bound by very uh, tight bands and restrictions. It had to have reasonable suspicions, individualized, articulated reasons for the government to intrude upon an individual. Now the government seeks to a right to intrude upon individuals without individualized suspicions, essentially turning it from a uh, police activity into a regulatory one in which it only needs what? Uh, intelligence chatter. Uh, instead of having what looks like hard evidence or even reasonable suspicion about an individual, you only need a generalized uh, apprehension about the state of the world being dangerous. Our kind of constitutional government, our kinds of restraint, our kinds of, uh, of liberty uh, kind of dissolves uh, when the government is not forced to articulate exactly what it is that it's looking for and account for its searches. I, I am not as confident that given the jurisprudence that's emerged previously that the courts will have the discipline to, to re reject uh, these searches because the court has been buying on, buying into a regulatory search. But it's also insisted that those searches be uh, the least intrusive that are necessary to achieve the objectives uh, that the government has. And is this uh, a full body groping search that the TSA is conducting, is that the minimal intrusion consistent with the objectives that the government has. It's been suggested that the TSA really wants to conduct these searches not because they're necessary, but because they're a penalty for people who want to opt out uh, from the scanning machine and they want to make it such an embarrassing, such an intrusive uh, activity that people uh, will freely submit uh, to the scanners to avoid uh, what goes on uh, with the, with the screening. If that's true, it is a very problematic situation indeed. And it's also been suggested that the, uh, the quality of these scanners, that is essentially their ability to preserve images and to see so clearly, could have been changed so as to provide the government with the information it needed without either storing uh, what are essentially kind of pornographic photographs or of subjecting the person to uh, uh, having to have these uh, other people view them in a way uh, that is extremely uh, disturbing from both kind of a, um, a, a moral way and a kind of a psychological way, deep and disturbing. Um, it is challenges that are presented uh, by incidents like this that have a potential uh, not just being isolated and frozen in time to be related to fighting terrorism, but because this fight is seen as going on for a very long time, that might have very corrosive effects on the relationship between their people and their government and very subtly change how the government views people uh, as potentially a source of threat and how people respond to the government, of course, once they have had to uh, share with the government uh, what would normally be their most private kind of uh, exposures and having and feeling themselves without the dignity to be able to say no to the government or to be able to say no without losing a very uh, intimate sense of who they are, without having to share that and potentially living in an environment where uh, pictures of them have been uh, preserved inside these things. These are, uh, are issues that extend uh, way beyond our immediate sense of risk or any sense of danger. And these are procedures that have the potential for eroding uh, and redefining the very relationship between the uh, average American and, and his government. Uh, in summary, we have two problems related to scanners. One of the health concerns, and in all fairness to those, uh, uh, the claims that these things are totally safe appear to be at best uh, problematic, and there do appear to be 
substantial risk to special groups such as pregnant women and children, at least in the view of some scientists. On the uh, side of privacy, it would appear that the uh, government may be overreaching because it could have achieved these objectives either by revising the technology, which it declined to do, uh, and it appears that these procedures could be the first in a series of other procedures that could be eroding the basic relationship between the American people and their government and a lead down a path in which the uh, uh, rights of, for privacy or the rights against uh, rules related to search and seizure are eroded beyond recognition.